YouTube, welcome to Fun Build Play. In this video, I have another shop upgrade. I'm going to be converting this window air conditioner into a split system. This means I can put the compressor and condenser outdoors and keep the evaporator indoors. I'm setting it up this way because I don't have any windows that this will fit in. I used to have this installed on the roof of the garage and cut a hole in the, the, the roof, but uh, that started leaking after a few years and I don't want to deal with that. Uh, I also put a new roof on the garage and don't want to have that one to start leaking. So here's the air conditioner I'm going to be working on first. Uh, when I had these installed on the roof, I actually had two of these to, to cool down the shop. Uh, this is a 1200 watt, 14,000 BTU General Electric uh, window air conditioner. And this one runs off of uh, 410A refrigerant. Just something to note is uh, to work with refrigerants uh, legally in the U.S., you are supposed to be EPA certified. Um, there are some spots where you can get this certification online, at least for the Type 1, uh, which is for small air conditioners like this one. Uh, I got mine from EPA, I think it's .com. Uh, they also have some YouTube videos out there just for study guides and things like that. It's a pretty easy 50 question test to uh to pass it and some uh some suppliers also require that for um purchasing refrigerant as well so the tools i'm going to use for this build i have a manifold for a uh, high and low pressure gauges this also has a yellow line to add refrigerant or remove it and a vacuum pump this all came as one kit and then i also have a refrigerant recovery machine. This is so I can vacuum out the refrigerant that's already in there and store it in a, uh, an empty cylinder. For that, I also have the empty cylinder, which is this one. And then if I do need some extra refrigerant added, I do have some uh, R410A ready to go. Since I am going to be installing this outside, and it's going to be it's going to be about 20 feet between the evaporator and condenser. I got some uh, copper line to install for there. And as well as a, a nitrogen tank. So I can fill the system while it's, uh, while it's open so it doesn't have uh, air into it. Which would cause problems with the, the uh, compressor oil. It also helps with the, uh, the soldering or brazing of the, uh, the, the copper joints. Some other parts I got were uh, a self-piercing uh, access valve, as well as some solder-in or brazen access valves. Uh, since these don't have, since these aren't already installed in the window air conditioner, I'll have to add them as well. Uh, for all the tools and parts I'll be using in this video, uh, I'll toss them all in the uh, the description of this video. I will also set up separate uh, review videos for the uh, vacuum and manifold, as well as the uh, recovery machine. Now I have everything set up and ready to, to go to disconnect this. Uh, since these don't have any access valves, they do have a couple stubs. I'm going to be using a self-piercing valve. This actually doesn't have a valve in it. It just an open tube, and then a it comes out and punctures the copper tubing to create an access valve for it. Uh, since these don't have a an automatic shutoff valve, you are going to want to have your hoses connected to them before you you puncture the copper tubing. So to create this split system, I'm going to keep the compressor and condenser combined, as well as the original the tray here. Uh, this one was, was actually installed on the roof, so it's a bit dirty, it needs to be cleaned out a bit. And then the evaporator is going to stay in the garage. The only problem here is the motor here. This actually spins um, this one motor spins both 
the outside fan, as well as the the small blower motor for the inside. So it's turning one turns both fans. So I am going to have to replace this fan with something else once I get this installed in the uh, the garage, the, the workshop. So just something to note here that the valve does come with a couple different inserts. Uh, there's different sizes for different sizes copper tubing. So make sure you have the right insert for the, the size you're using. After that, just tighten up all the screws and get these as tight as you can without stripping them. Just to make sure you don't have any leaks when you when you pierce the, uh, the copper tubing. So next up, I'm going to pierce those and use the the gauge system to pull from both sides as well as the recovery machine to put all the refrigerant back in the empty recovery tank. So now I've punctured the copper tubing and leak tested the valves real quick and as you can see that there's no pressure showing up on the gauges. Now it's time to run the recovery machine and see how long this takes. Now there's about two pounds of refrigerant in this air conditioner. So I guess I'll run this until the inlet uh, shows a zero pressure. Okay, so the recovery machine's been running for about 45 minutes now. And it's pulled everything out of the air conditioner. Now it's time to take off the temporary valves. Uh, these are prone to leak, so they are going to be replaced with the, the regular copper access valves. Uh, and when I do this, I'm going to be filling it with nitrogen just so it doesn't uh, have any corrosion on the inside of the copper. Alright, so I have my nitrogen tank hooked up now. I have about 20 pounds of nitrogen in the air conditioner. And I'm going to take off the high side valve and replace it with the permanent valve. Uh, unfortunately, my stub here is almost the same exact diameter as my access valve. So I'm just going to use a larger piece of tubing as kind of a uh, adapter to, to be able to solder that back in. For cutting the tubing, I've been using these uh, tubing cutters, pipe cutters. I'm trying to avoid getting any um, filings inside of the tubing. And then to bend them, I also have some brake line tools. That's what let me get my 90 degree angle on my valve. And I'll also toss all of these, the tools and parts used in the, uh, the description of this video. So first up, while your nitrogen is running in the other access valve, uh, pull off the access valve and let the nitrogen continue flowing. Uh, here I tried to use a, a small tubing cutter to cut it, but it wouldn't fit with the other line in the way, so I ended up just using a hacksaw blade without the saw. After that's cut, use some uh, very fine grit sandpaper to, uh, to clean up the outside of the copper tubing. This will let you get a good seal on your, uh, your soldering. Add some flux. Uh, here's the adapter I was using to, to add that access valve. Um, I still wanted to use the outside air conditioner housing, so I had to make sure the, uh, the valve would fit inside the outside air conditioner case. So I ended up bending around the, the access valve and the adapter tubing. And make sure you remove the, the valve inside the access tubing. Uh, this will end up melting if you try soldering with the, um, with the valve still installed. And then I just use some pliers to get a good seal around the, the adapter. Then I just used a map gas torch as well as some high temperature solder to, uh, to install the valve. If you end up using an adapter like this, make sure you just add enough uh, solder to fill the gap and get a good seal around the, uh, the copper. From there, I just cleaned up the fittings, added the uh, the valve back in, and then uh, hooked up my nitrogen to this one and repeated the same process on the other access valve. So 
So now I have the second access valve installed. Everything is all leak proof and is filled with about 50 pounds of nitrogen just to test it. I also cut the, the wiring for the compressor and the fan and uninstalled all of the screws holding the evaporator in place as well as the, the fan and the shroud on the back. Uh, so next up I'll be cutting this here as well as here and that will be able to remove the uh, evaporator and separate it from the compressor and condenser. I'm also going to tape all the lines shut and fill it with nitrogen again. The oil on the compressor will actually absorb moisture and cause problems for the compressor. So I'm trying to keep this sealed as much as I can. Now that I have everything apart, I just need to put it all back together again. So I have the evaporator cut apart from the compressor now. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, the inside fan as well as the outside fan use the same motor. So I'm going to have to disassemble this and replace the indoor one with a, uh, a new lower motor. So a replacement here. Then I just need to build a new uh, replacement for the styrofoam enclosure. Solder all the lines back together and then wire everything back up to the, uh, the controller panel. And it should be good to go. So where I'm going to install this, I already have the lines run. These go through the wall, outside, and then up to the roof. So here I'm reconnecting all the lines and wires to the compressor and fan. I'm soldering all the electrical just to make sure I have a good connection to the wires and then taping them real good to keep everything weatherproof. You can also see here that the fan's been reinstalled for the condenser. So here I'm just reconnecting the copper lines for the compressor and condenser while uh, filling the system with nitrogen. So up until now I've just been using this map gas torch to solder all the air conditioning lines. Even with the high temperature solder it's been able to give off enough heat to, uh, to solder these no problem. I am running into a, a bit of a problem with this line though. With this large chunk of copper right here. It's pulling away too much heat from my solder joints. And I'm not able to uh, heat up the entire joint at once. Uh, it's causing some leaks in the, uh, the solder. So now I'm going to switch to the oxyacetylene torch and hopefully that will solve the problem. Finally also found my solder shields or heat shields. Especially it's good because I'm soldering right next to this piece of wood. Up until now I've just been using a piece of uh, drywall. And these work for a little while but eventually the, uh, the heat will get to them and they'll fall apart. Okay, so I finished soldering all the copper lines, and I left some nitrogen in the system overnight to uh, test it. Now I'm ready to vacuum the system out of the nitrogen and add some uh, R410 refrigerant back in. After that, I'll check the pressures on the R410 with the compressor running, and this should be ready to go. Alright, now that everything is connected again and the system is charged, I have all the wiring reinstalled. Uh, these go up to the the roof where that are connected to the uh, the fan and the compressor. The only problem here is that since the enclosure is up on the roof, there's no fan for this. So I had to build a new enclosure for the evaporator, and I came up with this. So I built a new enclosure for it, as well as adding some, some fans and blowers. Um, 
This uses a centrifugal fan as well as two of these server fans. I'll also toss all the links for these, these parts and tools on the description of this video. So then these get installed here. And then here's the, the blower and the other fan. And then on the front of this, there's going to be a air filter that will just keep the, uh, the insides of the evaporator from getting dusty. So I'll just reinstall this and test everything out. And here's a look at the finished products. All I have to do left is uh, install the water line where I can get rid of the, uh, the condensation from the evaporator as well as um, put the display somewhere and to kind of uh, cable, ma cable manage the, the wires. But at least it's installed. One recommendation I would have is if you're setting one of these up, make sure you have a little bit more room to work with. Uh, mine's kind of crammed in the corner. And it's a little bit hard to move around after you have the line soldered. Now it's time just to fire this up and cool down the, the workshop. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. If you have ideas for videos, toss them in the comments.